Today we are talking about connecting life with prayer. Connecting life with prayer. I want to read today from Psalm 34, 1 through 15. Okay, don't pull out your phones. Okay, if you have a physical Bible, you can follow along. If not, it's going to be on the screen. Psalm 34, 1 through 15. As I was praying in this last week, Lord, what scripture do you want me to speak on? There are so many scriptures in relation to prayer. And I started to go to the Psalms and I started to think about David and how he prayed and how his prayer was an act of worship. And I thought, man, that's what I want my prayer to be like daily. I want it to be a worship time with God. And so I came to Psalm 34. We're going to read verses 1 through 15. It says, I will bless the Lord at all times. Everyone say amen. Everyone say at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt His name forever. Verse 4, I sought the Lord, and He answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to Him are radiant, and their faces shall never be ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. For those who fear Him have no lack. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, O children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is there who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Turn away from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous, and His ears toward their cry. My encouragement for us today, and you're going to hear me say it so often that I want it to be embedded in your brain, you leave saying this phrase, C-I-U, God wants to connect with you. CIU, God wants to connect with you. Pray with me. Father, we thank you for an intentional time of prayer today. A day in which you have encouraged our leadership and university to set aside classes, to set aside the obligations of work and what we do, to come before your presence and to worship you, the King of kings and Lord of lords. God, that we may just come to hear from you, to hear from you in worship and in Scripture reading, in study. And Lord, that we may just come and talk to you. Our Father, Abba Father, as we come before you as little children in need and desire of our Father's love. How great it is to pray to you, Father. Father, I pray over these next few minutes, Lord, as I know you have convicted me and my prayer life, that you will do the same for these students, for our faculty and staff. And Lord, that we will leave this place Wanting to pray more. Because Father, I truly believe you are wanting to connect with us. You are trying to get our attention. And so Father, give us ears to hear. Give us a heart that is open and receiving. 
and a mind that is free from the distractions of life. Speak to us, Father, in these next minutes we pray. Amen. This afternoon I want to share with you the power of prayer and again how God connects our life with prayer. R.C. Sproul, many of you I'm sure have heard of him, he once wrote that nothing is more powerful than prayer. And prayer is not a desirable extra in the Christian life. It is commanded by God to be essential in everything we do. God says, here's my command. He says, I want you, I want you to talk to me about everything. And that's, that's the craft translation of pray without ceasing. Never stop praying. God wants you to come and talk to him. CIU students, faculty, staff, myself included, as you you hear the tension in my prayer, because this has been an emotional message to write with conviction, how is your prayer life? We are now almost four weeks into this semester. Account the amount of times you've taken time to pray to God. And not just before a Crutchfield exam, New Testament exams, math exams. How good is our prayer life? Do we truly understand that when we pray, we're going to God? He is the architect. He is the most powerful. The creator of everything in the universe. The vastness of God cannot be understood or comprehended. And He comes to us and He says, just talk to me. Just tell me what you want. No one has power with God who doesn't. Pray. And the question is, we're living in a society that has bound us to all these demands. I know you feel them, I feel them. Things that we think we have to do, and the question is, do you pray? It is the most powerful thing in the universe. Nothing can take the place of prayer. It doesn't matter whether you were saved at a very young age, you were saved five years ago or five minutes ago, God still says to all of us, come to my throne room and talk to me. What other king or president or authority or leadership do you know that would humble themselves enough to just say, come, come and talk to me? Students, do you believe that there is power in prayer? It's not rhetorical. Students, do you believe that there is power in prayer? Thank you. Do you believe that prayer can change lives? Do you believe that God hears your prayers? Do you believe that prayer is essential to your relationship with God? If yes, then commit to praying daily. And if you didn't answer... God love you for the conviction of it because I don't know if I would respond either. I know I say I believe it, but how do I show it in my actions? How do I show it in the time in which I spend with God? I want to encourage you to commit to giving up on the distractions of life that seek to draw you away from God and prioritize your life around prayer. God wants to connect your life to Him, and we do that through prayer. So how do we do this? How do I connect the busy, already overloaded life that I have, my school, my friends, my family, work, and service to prayer? I'm going to give you three ways. The first one, we look to the greatest example of prayer, Jesus Christ. Jesus was the answer to prayer, and He gave us the gift of prayer. Jesus prayed. He lived a life of prayer. He didn't just teach us about prayer. He didn't just teach us how to pray or to agree with prayer. He didn't just nod at prayer, but he prayed. The Savior, the Son of God, God in the flesh, prayed. 
And if Jesus prayed, how much more do you and I need to be on our knees in prayer with Him? I'm convinced, truly, Jesus did a lot of great things, yes? Yep. We read through Scripture, we read of His teachings, we read of His miracles, miraculous miracles that He did. We see the fellowship with other believers. We see Him go and witness to non-believers. But I want to attest that I think the majority of Jesus' ministry is what we don't see. It's what we don't hear or read. It's the time that he spent with the Father in prayer. Jesus was never in so big a rush that he didn't have time to spend hours in prayer. And I often can't spare five minutes on my knees to give him thanks, to bring my request, to share what's on my heart with the one that made me. He prayed before every difficult task. He prayed in regularity. Not a day began or closed on which He did not unfold His soul before His Father because Jesus knew the power of prayer. So when you consider how to connect your life with prayer, look first to the one that set the example for us on the power and purpose of prayer. The second way we connect life with prayer is by making it a priority. Students, you have everything competing for your time. I'll be honest with you, you look exhausted today. We all are, right? We all are. Because we have a limited amount of time to do the things that we want to do, that we think God has set before us to do, and let alone life, especially life outside of this campus, is competing for all of your time. Sports, Who's an athlete? Keep your hand up. Okay, now keep it up if you apply to this next one. Who works? Okay, keep your hand up if the next one applies to you. Who has social engagements? Who has friends? Please don't put your hand down because that would be really sad. <laughs> and if I listed anything else, we'd have to raise our feet or we just would have to stand up, right? Hands down, thank you. Everything is competing for your time. Not to mention five to six classes with professors all encouraging your time, energy, and best efforts. I'm one of them. I know. Couple that with the distractions of life. Anyone else in here get distracted? I'm distracted all the time. You know why I'm distracted all the time? Might be a little ADHD. But it's because I'm so busy. Right? We're so busy. And so we get distracted. We almost are so busy that we want to be distracted. Give me anything that can take my mind off of the pressures of life. That prayer can become such a distant thought, a fleeting memory, almost like a dream. You have this best dream and you wake up and you go to tell someone and all of a sudden you forgot it. You're like, oh, I wish I could just go back to bed and have that dream. And it's almost like prayer acts in that same way. That we're so fleeting with our time with prayer that it's like something that I remember experiencing but that I don't get to share in because I don't do it enough to be able to remember it. But hear me, friends. Can we be friends? Thank you. It's a college of ed thing. Distance from God leads to destruction. It will lead to worldly and spiritual destruction if we are distant from God. God never designed you to be away from Him. He designed you to have close proximity with Him so He could love you, protect you, guide you. And as soon as we walk away from God and we stop our prayer life with Him, don't just think that you're out here in the field alone. Satan comes directly in to fill the space and to fill the void. We have to keep in close proximity and prayer with God if we don't want our lives to be led to destruction. And I'm telling you that as a 39-year-old man who's had his up and downs, mountains and valleys of life, and I've walked away from God and it's never led to something good. I promise you. So take it from all of us as your faculty. We've lived the life. We've walked away from God. 
We've stopped in our prayer life, and the outcome is never good. Distance leads to destruction. In order for you to connect your life with prayer, you must make prayer a priority. And I'm going to tell you how. Are you ready? Three words. They all start with S. I'll say them. You repeat them. Ready? First one. Schedule. Sacred. Sacrifice. We'll do it again. Ready? Schedule. Sacred. Sacrifice. Tell it to your partner. You may need to schedule times with God. And you might say, crap, that's silly. I don't need to schedule times with God. I just pray. Really? How's it going for you? Because it doesn't go well for me. It sounds silly, but why should it sound silly? We schedule everything else in our life, right? My alarm goes off at 6 a.m. Who set that schedule? I did. I know what time I need to leave the house if I want to beat the traffic and get through like seven different lanes of construction. I schedule that. Okay? When I get home from a busy day, I go in my bathroom. This is not going to get weird, I promise. I lock the door and I have five minutes alone with God. When you get three kids and they all want your time at the same time, you will understand. The bathroom becomes a sacred place, okay? You schedule that time with God. And what that means, and I know this is tough, is that you might need to say no to certain things. And we don't want to do that. We don't want to say no to friends We don't want to say no to our desires and what we want to do. I don't want to say no to coffee time or smash bros. But you need to schedule time with God. You need to give Him a little bit of your time so that He can work into your life. Can you do me a favor? Can you do me a favor? Good, stand up for me. Told you we were going to use them again. Pull out your phones. Now, listen to me. If you're an indecisive person like my wife, I love her. (laughs) I can't do this for you because I don't know your schedule. Who knows their schedule best? God does. Okay? But you do too. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Okay? Take out your phone, either in your calendar or an alarm, and I want you right now to set an intentional time with God. I want you to schedule it. And I want you to title it, if you're putting it in your alarm or your calendar, Time with God. Do that right now. See, it doesn't matter if we schedule five minutes with God, ten minutes, fifteen doesn't matter the time. What matters is that you schedule it and that you keep it. And what I think you'll find if you schedule time with God and you keep to those appointments, something that might start for two minutes, five minutes, might be something that you want a whole lot more in your life. And you'll find that you'll start filling that empty time with God. Did you do it? Promise. Teacher, look. Okay, sit back down. You know what? I'm sorry. Stand back up. (laughs) Come on. It's 2.30. What do you expect out of me, okay? Take back out your phone. I love that many of you put it down, though. Thank you. Open up your alarm. I want you to set an alarm tonight for 9 p.m. 9 p.m. You guys are up at 9 p.m., right? What, Sam? Oh, well, there you go. Here's what I want to encourage you in. 
I think it'd be amazing. How many people we got here? I don't know. Let's just guesstimate 150. Maybe I might be overestimating because I'm prideful. Okay. Um, I think it'd be amazing if 150 of us all had our own individual times. But can you imagine if 150 of us tonight at 9 o'clock our alarms go off and we all stop and pray together. You may say, well, but I'm not, it doesn't matter if you're with me. It's not about me. It's about you and God. But it's also about us together uniting in prayer with God. Now, can you imagine the word getting out? And you go and encourage a friend. We're going to talk about that in a minute. And this entire campus at 9 p.m., we stop whatever we're doing and we pray. And listen, here's the challenge, because it is hard to keep a schedule, yes? It is hard to keep a schedule. When that alarm goes off tonight, did you set it? Did you set I'm really serious. I promise you tonight, 9 p.m., I will be on my knees. And I will be praying for this campus. I will be praying for you. And I really hope that you will do that with me. But it is hard to keep a schedule. My six-year-old, I hope he's not up by nine, but let's be honest, okay? I'm not the award-winning dad all the time. He loves to play Uno. Anyone else Uno players? Okay? I might have to stop my Uno game to stop and pray. Now, is my son going to get upset? Yeah. But can I tell you what I'm going to teach my son in that moment? That prayer is more important than games. Let's stop playing games with God, and let's pray to him tonight at 9 p.m. You promise? I promise? I promise. All right, now you can sit down. I promise I won't make you stand up again. See, what I want to happen on this campus is I want to see revival happen. Revival is a word we throw out so loosely, Right, But we say it and we kind of hope that someone else will take the lead. No one else is going to take the lead on a revival unless you do it. And it's going to take every single one of us doing it. That's how revival happens. And if we got together and we started praying, man, guys, God will change and transform this university. Revival will happen on campus when God's people commit to pray together. So you scheduled it and now you have to make it sacred. What does sacred mean? Sacred means that nothing gets in the way of it. Again, we already agreed together, keeping a schedule is tough. And one of the ways you do that is you have to set aside sacred time. That means uninterrupted time. That means nothing takes the place of it. Game time doesn't take the place of it. Sports don't take the place of it. And hear me, if you got sports practice tonight at 9 o'clock... Don't tell coach, I said, don't play, okay? But pray while you play, right? Sometimes we got to do that. My best prayer time, guess where it is? Not the bathroom, driving. Yes, right? It's driving time because that is my time. It's uninterrupted time, okay? The world's crazy going on around me. Drivers are nuts around here, okay? And I just, I need to pray for one thing, okay? But it's my prayer time, but it's sacred time. When I'm, my kids get in the car with me, Dad, can we listen to the radio? No, this is Dad's time to pray. But, Dad, no but, Dad. It's sacred. Okay? It's lessons for us that we teach to others on the importance of sacred prayer time. So make time with God a sacred event. Don't schedule. Here's, here's what I really want to encourage us because we've already done this. We come to campus on week one and we got those schedules out and we're busy, busy. We put classes in, classes in, classes in. I got them all in. Okay, campus life. I got to go to this, I got to do this, got to this. I got sports practice, this, 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 this. You fill up your schedule when the first thing you put, should have put in the schedule is what? Time with God. See, that means sacred. So what I would really want to encourage you to do is go back and reevaluate your schedule. You can't change those things you put in. I'm not asking you to, but spend time with God. Schedule it. Make it sacred. Will it, last S, will it take sacrifice? Will it take sacrifice? Absolutely. Do all good things require sacrifice? Yes. If you haven't figured it out, the answer is yes. It requires great sacrifice. And this is one of the best things that we can sacrifice is our time with God. 
But I'll make you another promise. I made you the promise of revival, and I want to hold to it. The other promise is this. It will be one of the greatest sacrifices that you ever make. I promise you. Brings me to my third and final point. I know you've been here all day. As a campus praying together, God will connect your life to prayer through the accountability of other believers. We need each other. Amen? We need each other. Amen? Okay, even introverts say amen. Okay? We need each other. It's the way God designed us. He designed us to have fellowship with other believers. It's how the body is strengthened spiritually and how we are most effective in our ministry. It is by doing life together. It's about being there for a friend, a partner, a teammate, a colleague, and saying that I am here for you and I will pray for you. I will hold you accountable to praying tonight at 9 p.m. I'm serious. I've been in your shoes I go to church, it's easy to walk out and forget. Don't forget, 9 p.m. Someone posted on the app. Flood the app. Can students post on the app? Post on the app, 9 p.m. prayer. I'm serious, because we're going to forget. It's easy to. Hold each other accountable. It's about desiring that your friend truly knows God and has relationship with Him through prayer. Students, if you're not, you should pray for each other. Pray for each other. Students, if you haven't, you should. And I know that sometimes you get upset with us, right? Okay? Just remember, I don't assign grades. You earn grades. Pray for your faculty. I'm serious. Pray for us. Pray for us. That God will convict us on how we can better serve and love you. That we can help lead in ministry so that you see the example as we follow after the example of Christ. Pray for your staff. Pray for the leadership of this university. Pray for the names you don't even know that God needs to bring to this campus because they need to hear Christ. Some of you, when you came to this campus, you didn't know Him. And God, in the time that you are here, God will convict you and you will find Him. Thank God that you came to this university. Thank God that we can be together and have accountability together. Can you be that person for someone? Think of the person that needs prayer right now. Think of the person, think of a friend someone in your dorm, someone on campus, someone that you know is going through a rough time, someone with sickness and health, whatever it may be. We all have someone that we should pray for. God has called us to that. CIU, God wants to connect with you. Give Him your time. Make Him a priority. Join in accountability with others and always, always look to God, the perfecter of our faith. Will you pray with me? Father God, how good and sweet and precious. It is to be before your presence. God, I thank you for these students and I thank you for this day. I thank you that you are a God that hears our prayers. That you are a God that is not so great and not so vast that you don't understand what we're going through. God, most of all, I thank you for your son. I thank you for the example of the life that he set. That prayer time was an important time for Jesus. And in honesty, God, it was an important time for you. We are your creation. You made us. 
You made us to serve you and to love you. Father, forgive us for how little time we spend with you in prayer. Forgive me, Father, to stand even before this podium that I'm not worthy to pray your name because I spend such little time with you, God. But still, Father, you love us and you use us in incredible and powerful, amazing ways. Father, I want to see revival happen on this campus. I don't want there to be any question that God reigns at CIU because it'll be so present and evident in the lives of our students, faculty, and staff that when people come here, there's not even a question of where else I want to go. I want to go to that place because those students, they know Jesus. And they know Him, not just because we put it on a wall. We know Him because we spend time with Him. And He speaks to us. And He loves us. And He directs us. I want to see sin banished on this campus because we sacrifice all those other things. Because nothing is sweeter than the grace and love of God. God, convict our hearts that when we leave this prayer day today, our prayers do not stop, but they begin a fire within us that is so sweet and precious that so many people want. God, thank you for your son. Thank you that we get to be called Christians and that we are to follow after your model and example. God, help us in the busyness of our life that we would set time, that we would schedule it with you, that we would make it sacred, and that we would be willing to sacrifice just a little time to spend with you. Father, I thank you for this day. Thank you for those that have led, that have guided us in prayer, and that have had any part in this day. May we go from this place wanting more and more of you in our life. In Christ's name we pray.